Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to introduce you to my older son, Ardashir, who is uh, 19 now. He'll be 20 before the year is out. And he's home for the summer, uh, having just finished his sophomore year at Columbia. And uh, among other things that he's got planned, he has a, a special project that's sort of right up the alley that uh, I can show you some of the books that are here on, on the table. So Ardashir, would you like to introduce yourself and talk about what you're up to? Yeah, so um, as Professor Arguelles, my father just said, um, my name is Ardashir. I am a uh, rising junior at Columbia University. At the moment, I'm majoring in classics, but I would like to double major with East Asian studies. And one of the requirements for that major is actually to uh, demonstrate um, at least two years of proficiency in some East Asian language. Um, so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to finally um, get the, get a handle on Korean, which you know I regret not having learned growing up, half of my family being Korean. And so um, that's my project this summer, to study Korean intensively, uh, to be able to take the placement exam and place into third year Korean um, this fall. Wonderful. Yeah. So basically it's the beginning of June, and we actually started this project a couple of days ago, June 1st. So it's got 90 days. Uh, the test is at the end of August, right? In the beginning of September. So basically it's got 90 days to um, do two years of college Korean, which um, for Joe or Jane, monolingual American language learner would be really pretty ambitious. You're still going to have a lot of work to do. Um, that's going to require discipline and hard work, but in your case, I think it is doable because you've got a lot going for you, a lot of preparation there already in terms of not being, it's not your first language and this is not, you're not a beginning Korean student. So let's talk a little, because I do think it's really important, the fact that you're, you're learning a language. Um, the more languages you know, the easier it gets to learn other languages. I really believe that learning a language is a a transferable, learnable skill, and that's why I'm excited for you to be doing this, because although, as we're saying, your your specific immediate goal is to pass this uh, proficiency test at the end of the summer, and that's what you're focused on, but I'm actually more focused on, like, the lang most of the languages you know, I kind of had a hand in teaching you or you studied, but this is the first language, if you succeed at this, that you'll, like, really teach yourself, mm -hmm. and I think that's an important thing that you're learning, too, how to teach yourself a language. I think once you've taught yourself, one language, you'll be able to teach yourself others, and you are chip off the old block, you've got a scholarly heart, you want to learn other languages in the future, so this is a good thing for you to know how to do. Um, <clears throat> let's let the world know what, what other languages you know already and how you know them, so that's important to how you're going to learn this language. Um, right, so I, learned, I spoke French alongside English growing up, so there's that. Studied German and Latin for several years in middle school and high school. So I've got those. Um, Latin especially for uh, classics is something I'm continuing with. Um, recently for classics, I started on Attic Greek, um, but we did a little bit of Greek in high school as well. And then uh, a little bit of Russian for a, little, for a time when we were visiting Russia and uh, some Korean, some Spanish um, from our time in California, dual language um, elementary school. So some of that. More than that, we also did Spanish in Dubai to the degree that both Spanish and your, so you're double, you're a classics major. You're doing Latin and Greek that you had mm -hmm. intensive and now, you know, classic reading classes now. So two years of college Latin and Greek um, built upon lots of Latin background, uh, German and Spanish too. Um, we got to the point where we were reading literature. You read Borges, we read Borges together. We read... Um, <laughs> here comes Merlin. Um, we, we read uh, German literature. Um, right. And so, yeah, just a, not so much Russian, but I think Russian to the point that you could do what you're basically proposing to do with, with Korean here now. Um, so, yeah, this is like your seventh or eighth language. So that's, you know, um, significant. That's going to make this task a lot easier. Um, and now let's talk about your Korean. I mean, you are somewhat of a Korean heritage speaker. I mean, it actually was probably your first language when you were born in Korea, and right. you moved to Lebanon before you were two, but for the first year and a half of your life, mommy spoke Korean to you, uh, and she and I spoke Korean in the home, so when you were a teeny tiny baby, not that you remember any of that, that's probably the vibes that, that you heard. Um, when we moved to Lebanon, though, I mean, mommy said, you know, as soon as we got there, she said to me, please, you know, I, I need English now, you know, can we speak English and not Korean, I need to practice it, and she 
kind of used you as her safety thing. She stopped speaking Korean to you then so she could practice speaking English to you and feel comfortable talking to somebody. Um, so since then, I mean, what, what, how would you describe the degree? Of, again, she, since then too, I mean, she has a, she doesn't want to speak Korean with me in the house or speak to me if we go out to, to dinner or something, but we don't really speak Korean as a home language. Um, I remember I tried to sometimes use it as a secret language when you guys were growing up, but you would always say, I know what you're talking about, you know, so you obviously understood something. Um, what, what would you feel like you really acquired from Korean, sort of a home environment language, while we're talking it to you and stuff like that? Um, right, the basic familiarity with the cadence of the language, um, basic familiarity with the um, sounds, pronunciation, the alphabet is not difficult for me. Um, you know, uh, exposure to Korean culture, Korean food, um, Korean TV shows, media. Um, when we visited Korea in 2018, it, it felt very familiar in some ways. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I would say it's, it's that. Uh, when, I, when I'm studying Korean, the, the main thing I feel like I run into is not so much that I don't know what's going on as I know what I want to say and I don't yet have the words to say it. Mm -hmm. I know what I would want to say and how it would sound, but I don't have the vocabulary, don't have enough, um, uh, yeah, don't have enough grasp just yet to say what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, like I said, you, 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 you've heard it around, you've had it, but um, one of my favorite memories of, of you is like the famous saying of what Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Emperor said something about speaking German to his horse and English to his friend and Italian to his mistress. I remember when, you, I think it was in Lebanon, you know, the little tiny boy, and I asked you about the languages that you knew, and you said, well, French is for reading books, English is for when you don't know how to say it in French, and Korean is for yelling and praying. <laughs> so you had, like, things, I mean, you've heard your mother speaking it on the phone to her friends, and I think Korean media more than anything else, watching drama and video with subtitles. So, yeah, you, you pick some, but I think the most important thing is that this is not your first whack at Korean. We've tried systematically yeah. to use the SMEO book before, mm -hmm. and there are stickers in it that show that you got somewhere um, up more than to the middle of the book, and the last sticker is somewhere here. So can you talk about what we did with this before and how you know we kind of did it as a together with your brother also a point I remember, but also you did take this and try to do this on your own a couple of times, right? How many times have you tried to work through this? Let's say <clears throat> um, honestly, it was uh, one time systematically, which was when we visited Korea. You stayed in Dubai, but um, yeah, uh, we, we visited Korea to visit relatives, and I took the book along and tried mm -hmm. to go through it. Um, as I recall, it was primarily, I mean, we did shadowing exercises, mm -hmm. uh, tried to get through the book. I remember there was a system with the different bookmarks, but honestly, this was mm -hmm. uh, like three years ago, so I don't really recall. Right. No, but we also did some of this even here, this before you went. I, I remember you were doing some, and you were writing some out and, and stuff as well. So, yeah, this is not the first time you've done this, but... Um, what what broke down then in the self study? Why uh, you you asked me to send this to you last year? I sent it to you. You were going to teach it to yourself, and you didn't, or you started and couldn't. What 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 stopped you from doing the self study? I was under the impression first that I could take the placement exam at any time during the school year. Um, as it turns out, I mean, I guess I could technically, but the way it usually works is they have set dates um, before each semester starts. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. I thought I would study it and try and, you know, uh, show Korean proficiency before major declaration, which ended up not happening. Um, and a big part of that was also just that it was during the semester. I had a lot of other school stuff going on. I had all my classes happening. So it was hard to uh, continue independent study mm -hmm. alongside that and all the other things I was doing. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, so at any rate, my recommendation for you this summer um, is because you have done this and because it's just, you know, because this is a good thing. It says this was niveau à temps, be de, uh, I'm dubious of that. I think this will get you maybe to be one somewhere in there. But if you, first and foremost, I think that if you were to thoroughly, thoroughly internalize mm -hmm. the contents of, of this manual, um, that alone, I think, probably would be the equivalent of, of two years of, of college degree in terms of total mastery, again, built upon all your heritage and stuff, but we're going to do a lot more, which is why the books are here. So we've talked about this already, uh, and we said that, um, you know, how much should you be doing, right? And that one, one hour is definitely not enough. 
three hours would be better, but to set out and start doing that, that's kind of um, kind of oppressive. That's a lot to something to work up. I mean, you have other stuff you want to do this summer, right? It's right. summer. You, you want to tutor, get earn some money. You want to see your friends here mm -hmm. and stuff and work out and sort of enjoy the summer a little bit. So it's not the only thing you want to do. So I think we had on hit on two hours a day being a good place to start. But I do think that. Um, I've always said the, the more advanced you get in the language, the more you need to put into it, but also the more you get out of it. And so uh, if we start off saying you're going to do about two hours a day, primarily working through this book until you get finished it and mastered it, so you're basically at about lesson 50, right? Um, so uh, I think if we say in June, let's aim for two hours a month, uh, primarily focusing on this. A day. And, yeah, two hours a day. Yeah, two hours a day in June. Um, and then maybe in July, uh, we'll be adding other things that we can show you in a moment, uh, we'll talk about more in a moment, maybe work up to three hours a day. And then in August, the date will be approaching the, you'll be much more advanced, um, it'll be more fun, uh, and the pressure will be on. So maybe work up to maybe four hours a day in, in a natural fashion without too much pressure. Um, and uh, so that will average out to about three hours a day over the over three months. Um, so. Uh, we also talked about, as you know, everybody I recommend, you know, studying in, in 15 minute um, time blocks and chunks and you have um, rejected this. You've said that this doesn't suit you. You're used to with college study. Do you talk about your study style? It's based on my study schedule. What I'm used to, 15 minutes is not really enough to get into a state of deep work. Um, I think 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. is a good increment. Right. So again, this is, what's today, June 4th? June 4th. Um, we started this on June 1st, and we suggested, okay, if you're gonna do an hour at a time, an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening, um, you have uh, basically, and again, I, I think your first task is having worked your way, some way, shape, or form through about half this book before, um, we were gonna say, all right, if you wanna study for an hour at a time, at least break that hour into different activities and doing stuff. So. Um, I recommended that in the morning you do maybe half an hour of shadowing and all its variations with a very easy lessons. You can blind shadow, just say it. Uh, then when you start to need to review, you can look at it. And when you're doing totally new lessons, you can be saying Korean and, and looking at the French. Um, so I would say, yeah, just half an hour, an hour cycle. Not being wedded, this audio is tied to this lesson, but just doing the entire audio you know, in a cyclical form um, for half an hour. Uh, and then half an hour um, scriptorium, copying out the earlier lessons and paying attention to the grammar and looking at everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the evening lessons, you have the um, half an hour or, or 45 minutes to actually study this, to go and, you know, either the ones that you review, you know, look the one you, you said, what, up to lesson 30 is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. 30 to 50 is you need to review and 50 feels like new. So yeah, so focus on those, looking, you know, just you know, actually studying them, comparing and contrasting the sentences, reading mm -hmm. notes, you know, and you know how to do that. Um, and then you have, again, uh, you're in a very privileged position to be doing this. You have access to your mother, who is not just your mother, a native Korean woman. She's actually a, um, a certified teacher of, of the Korean language. So um, you're gonna have conversations with her because you didn't say that the proficiency test is that's, well, there's a multiple choice portion, there's a speaking portion, and there's a writing portion. So you need to be able to write Korean and speak Korean and to answer grammatical questions and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so start talking with mommy uh, is going to be a really important part. Um, and so yeah, you're pretty privileged in a position to have um, you know me, young scholar of, of languages, I'm a scholar of Korean, I've got all this stuff, I can give you stuff, and my mother can do that. but. There's also learning a language is a social, psychological thing too, and you know you're you're asking me for this help. I'm glad I'm happy to give it to you. You know, at, at, you know, at a certain degree, you know, you're you've experienced independence now, and now you're back at home, and your dad is telling you what to do, and and that's going to be kind of some weird to deal with, and you're not in the habit of speaking Korean with mommy, um, and so you know sometimes she's. It's really hard to like switch languages with somebody that you're used to speaking to somebody with, but you've done it a couple of nights now. Mm -hmm. It's going pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. And beside, before we look at the books, you also um, 
are going to have some Korean media, right? You, you listen to some Korean songs and and watch dramas and stuff like that. But um, I think we agreed that that would be um, frosting on the cake. That's like extra stuff, but you know the actual study. So so June uh, is two hours a day focused on this book. An hour in the morning, shadowing and scriptorium, uh, and then uh, studying and speaking it uh, in the evening. Um, and then when we get done with this book, we talked about, and here's where people have asked to show the Korean resources, so I'm going to show all this stuff here on the table that you can look forward to going to, and we can talk about it. So um, this book, as everybody knows, is The Intuitive Method, um, and so you're going to have some other books, so I would recommend once you get through the learning stage, you've learned all the new lessons, you're going to feed in a couple of other Korean textbooks. Now, there's zillions of Korean textbooks out there on the market. There's all sorts of things that um, people have recommended. Sometimes there's, there's Korean stuff, Korean, Korean stuff. Here's a whole bunch of um, things from Yonsei University, and this is Kongguk, Kongguk Taehakyo. So Korean, Korean books, these are like pretty advanced stuff. And then these are like almost for Korean children about how to write. I don't think you, you, you need this kind of thing. Um, so you might want to, this is I think for after this summer, you might want to move on to these things. But honestly, I've always found, I mean, if you can get like maybe next summer, you can go to Yonsei University and work with them. That's kind of good. But I, I don't find that the Korean presentation of Korean is, is, is as comprehensible in terms of like understanding the grammar and stuff as, as uh, at least Koreans who have lived outside of Korea know how to produce, you know, really present it to, to non-Koreans. So um, I would recommend, we're going to use after this book, mm -hmm. um, you're going to feed in some more information. So when you get to the point when you have learned all the lessons, but you're still reviewing others, I think we want to feed in maybe, um, here's an interesting book called The Historical, Literary, and Cultural Approach to the Korean Language, written by Kim jong Nok and what's this other name here? Alexander Arguez. Alexander Arguez. Oh yeah, I wrote this book like in a past life. And this book um, has the virtual, what I tried to do was get systematic grammatical exercises, particularly verbal conjugation and stuff, which you know, almost pattern drills that I think are really necessary for Korean that you don't have other things. So doing pattern drills, and this has longer dialogues that are also really tied to culture and history. Um, and I think you'll be ready for that at that point. And it also introduces um, Chinese characters, which are really important for learning. Um, you don't need too many textbooks, I would think. Um, but we, we also got this one here, Tuttle's Basic Korean. It's just one example of you know, some other book that we might want to work with. But for, for my money, um, if you really, and can you talk about what you said about um, the way you learned Latin and Greek intensively and then getting a grammatical overview? Right, so the way my Latin and Greek classes worked is there would be the intensive elementary class where you work through a textbook really um, in one semester. Um, so work through the entire textbook at a uh, just in-depth um, survey of the grammar, how it all works, and then you move on to the intermediate level classes, which are reading actual texts mm -hmm. and working in grammar review along the way. So if you're going to do another systematic Korean book, um, for my money, Wilfried Hermann's Lehrbuch der modernen koreanischen Sprache von Helmut Buske Verlag is absolutely, without any single question, the best Korean textbook out there. It's quirky because it was written by, and he's German in communist times, a uh, North Korean Korean, uh, but it's the only one that like he really explains clearly, you know, in terms that you might understand, and it might not really be native Korean, but that makes it understandable at the date of case and this kind of things like this. So this is the book that I learned Korean from, and you can see how dog-eared it is and written and stuff like that. So um, I think after an intuitive overview here, if you want your first systematic approach to grammar, I think yeah. this is the book that you should work through, and this will also give you some German review. Um, but in terms of what you just said, wanting um, systematic approaches to grammar, I think that you don't, you won't necessarily need all of this here, so you don't need to necessarily go through them, but if you want to pick up and go through grammar systematically, I think at that point, and these are like Koreans who know how to present this to, to not Koreans, call that the Korean Grammar for International Learners. 
um, just as a, a systematic overview, not a textbook for learning, no exercises, but I think this would be a really good thing for you to look at and go through to look at that systematic overview of, of grammar. And then there's also two volumes of Grammaire du Carrienne um, that might also be very good. So again, you don't need to do every single thing here, but maybe, you know, start working through some of these textbooks and probably look at this systematically uh, in July also. But I think what you would really enjoy moving on to more than anything, one thing that Korean is particularly rich in is bilingual texts and all sorts of bilingual texts and things like that. Um, most bilingual texts in Korean, there are all sorts of them, uh, are for Koreans learning English or for Koreans learning other language. So you just have to flip it around. It doesn't matter. Sometimes there are notes that you know explain English so that you won't have that, but just in terms of that. But there's this one series of um, the what is it the bilingual edition of modern Korean literature that is for Korean the English speakers people learning Korean so there's that one thing but we looked at there's just any number of series that are here's the teachings of the Buddha here's the this whole series of um, oh, this is publishing house Shisa Yongya Osa Choyun Publishing House various where you have like literally thick texts and, and both things on the side. I think you might be ready for this late July or August, but if you have fun, you like to read comic books, you have fun reading all sorts of literal, they've got these New Millennium comic books, but it was by Faust College, where you have um, the same text in English on the right and Korean on the left. And I think that this, I, I, last time I was in Korea, I bought a whole bunch of these. I think you'll enjoy looking at these. Um, and then for more, these are, again, these are Western, books like here's Don Quixote and this kind of thing but I think you'll also really enjoy this is the Sambu Chi um, in an interlinear edition so you have the English and you have the Korean directly underneath it so I think that you'll you know you're really interested in, in great books type stuff right you know reading good stuff like this so I think this will be fun for you and there's another series so there's any number of um, bilingual, interlingual, all sorts of good um, Korean uh, bilingual things. And I think that'll be fun for you to start um, doing more and more of in, August, in July and August. And like I say, if, I predict this is going to go really well. And by August, you'll be wanting to read some of these for the content and looking at the, at the language. But um, final thing for Korean, some people are concerned about vocabulary. And first and foremost, <laughs> Being a young whippersnapper, you had something on your phone that you were doing. What was all that all about? Um, I'm just, yeah, looking at different resources for vocabulary. Um, I don't think you're generally in favor of digitized <laughs> things, gamification, but I think particularly for something like vocabulary, which would typically rely on a degree of rote memorization. I mean, you can use roots and stuff, mm -hmm. but that still involves memorization. I right. think using that kind of an interface really helps memorize. Um, so. Yeah, you probably had videos where you talked about Duolingo and things like that. I'm looking at things like that. I'm looking at Anki flashcards, which mm -hmm. would um, provide a way to... Um, yeah. So I, I think that, yeah, so again, what I said before is that, and I think that if you want to, you know, really impress people on that test, um, the more Chinese characters, they call them Korean characters in Korea because they don't agree, they come from China, but the more Hangul, han, Hanja, you know, um, not only will that really show that you've studied the language, but speaking from my own experience, that was only when I began to study Hanja systematically that I understood the vocabulary. Before that, it was just sounds that didn't make any sense why this word means something, but when you understand etymology, it comes from that. So, um, And you actually did some of this uh, when you were very little, sitting next to me. You like, I was copying it out, and you like to sit and copy it next to me. So you've got some of that rattling around in the back of your head, too. So... But yeah, I think that there are these handbooks of Korean vocabulary. Here's the Total of Korean and a flash set of flashcards. Um, I would think that you might want to, if you feel that there are like voids in your vocabulary in, in August, you might want to, you know, go through some of these things and look at these. And I would recommend that a good thing to do at that stage would be, instead of just trying to memorize them or do something like that, like those tuttle cards are systematically or thematically organized in that Korean verb book too. So um, you need to write, you like to write. Um, that's one thing you want to be doing this summer, right? Writing your own stories, not you know, 
Korean, but you know, maybe you could write in Korean stories by all this, who knows? Um, but you can, um, I would say, take the vocabulary that are from there and prepare that, you know, write a little essay or some sentences from that. And then when you have your last thing every evening when that you do in terms of Korean study is the conversation with mommy, give her what you've written and have her like correct that and talk about that. And so it'll be working with the vocabulary and using it. Um, so, and then ultimately, you know, if you got that far, or if you wanted to go and take it further, then for people who were sort of say, okay, bilingual texts are kind of nice, I've got the vocabulary, you want to get onto the stage of real Korean readers. So um, some of these here by Francis Park and the, what's this publishing series here? The um, Holland, Holland International. Um, Francis Parks, they call it Speaking Korean, but it's a guide to Korean characters, and this is Reading and Mixed Scripts. And then also Fred Lukoff's First Korean Reader in Mixed Scripts by Yonsei University Press. And then, again, I myself, I did a couple for Dumwoody Press. I've got a North Korean Reader and a Newspaper Reader and some others. And so um, you might want to, you might be up to that in, in August, but I think that's probably after you're in third year Korean, but that's just something to look forward in the future. So, um, yeah, I think for the summer, uh, again, the best thing to do is truly internalize this, reinforce it um, with some other textbook learning, mm -hmm. um, yet because of your background in classics and liking the grammar and stuff, get a systematic overview of the grammar. Um, start reading bilingual texts with, you know, with, with comic books and then moving on to side by side. Um, reinforce it with some vocabulary if you need and know that there's readers to move up to. So, yeah, I think with your, with your background, the, the resources I can provide, the advice I can give you, mommy support, um, if, yeah, if you can stick to it, and get in the systematic routine, I have no doubt that you'll be able to do this. Yeah, sounds good. Looking forward to it. Okay. All right. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, show people my Korean learning resources. That's something people have been asking for. So um, thank him for doing that. And uh, I think people always wonder when in a video when Merlin is not in the video. Let me just end by showing you there. He's right next to us. So... Thank you for listening. I hope this was valuable, and I'll talk to you again next week. Thank you, Archer.